Hi guys, today we're taking a look at the coils of Bahama turn nine, and I decided to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be speaking over at various points in this video, kind of commentating what we did, because honestly there was just far too much footage, about 10 hours of uh, wipes to go through on my end. So instead of cutting that all down into a video without any kind of explanation, I thought I would kind of explain as we go along. So some of the footage is gonna be me talking through it like a voiceover like this, and some of it will be kind of stream highlighted moments to illustrate what we're doing so you can see some of the pulls and our real time reactions. So please do let me know in the comments down below if you like this commentary style so I know whether or not to use it in future videos. But without further ado, let's jump straight in. The Binding Coil of Bahamut, turn four. Min eye level, no echo, boom. Big elevator. Wait, how is there like a sky within the coil? That, how does that make sense? <gasps> Wait, it's like a parallel universe. That surely cannot be Dalmond. How, where are we? The final resting place of Nail Van Darnus. Okay. Okay, she ascended. Uh, oh shit, we're like reliving a second calamity right now within the coil. This is a mind fuck. Let's do it. Let's do it. Maid raid. Maid squad. Okay. Music. Ooh. She has a spear. BGM 100. All right. Preliminary uh, check of the arena. Is this a death wall? We might die if we go outside. It might turn into laser beams. I feel like these are going to put lasers up, right? We'll see how we go. We'll just run into the boss and see how it goes. Yeah, no uh, spoilers in chat for mechanics and stuff, okay? All right. God, I forgot my keybinds. I didn't play in a little bit. Okay. Iron Chariot. Move out of that. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. She dived across the arena. To a point on the circle. There's a rock over there. Or something. Okay. Yeah, Dynamo seemed like a like a eye of the storm kind of thing. So the first few pulls were us kind of dying to the Dynamo, which is the donut mechanic, and trying to figure out how to deal with these meteors that were raining down upon our heads. What we decided to do was place some markers um, over at the sides and uh, have people run out and place their meteors on top of the markers. Originally, we were placing them a little bit too close eventually we decided to go for a strat where we place one at the left and one at the right and then we move the boss to the other side of the room so essentially making a triangle out of two meteors and then where the boss was standing we also did have a few messy wipes to things like not spreading out enough when we had the markers over our heads where the boss kind of jumps on four of us at one time straight after the dynamo. So it was the dynamo stacked close to boss and then immediately spread out after that. Okay. Wait. I think Hello Rock. I guess just goes to two. Okay, that's landing on us. Get the fuck away. And now it's dynamo. Oh god. Maybe this is okay. Uh, the red rock still blew up there. Something worked. Thank Buster. Get still up if we can. Okay, Red Rock actually still up, by the way. So we started to feel pretty good about this strategy, and we eventually did make it to the first intermission, where surprisingly the boss started raining down a ton of rocks upon our head. 
and we didn't really know how to deal with this so we kind of just spread out and as you can probably guess we definitely wiped pretty fast the first time is that because we put the red too close um not sure why yellow exploded we had a red rock land next to it though but we got the first part down it works out pretty smooth until that point so progress so we finally managed to get all the rocks down um, and not landing on top of each other to instantly wipe the group. And then to our surprise, they turned into a set of adds, these rock golems. Now these golems will be very important as we get through the fight. But our immediate reaction was just kill them dead and get to the next mechanic. We just thought, oh, adds, we must kill adds. So as the meta gamers and DPS optimizers, well, at least that my brain is, I made the call to stack them up so that we could cleave them down, which was a huge, huge mistake because if you get the adds too close to each other, then they will actually combine into this kind of unkillable mega golem, which is huge and basically just one shots the raid. It has a ton of health. I think it even heals itself as well. Okay, one went big. Okay, we have to keep them spread, I think. Okay, I think this is like a white condition. Uh, this guy ain't dying anytime soon. <laughs> Demolish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, we cannot let them join into a big one. I think we used those meteors to blow up the rocks because we had two reds and a yellow up, right? So once we got through this and actually managed to kill the ads, after a little bit of trial and error, the boss started to rain down tons and tons of meteors on everybody in the group in quick succession. I think it is six meteors that land uh, on you and they can go on the same person twice as well, one after another. So we kind of panicked at this point and scattered a little bit and ended up just dropping rocks too close to each other, which again, in the same spirit as phase one, would instantly wipe the group if they were in a certain range between each other. However, when we did manage to survive this and get them spread out enough, we noticed that even more spawned on our heads and these three last meteors spawned another set of rock golems so we had six meteors followed by three rock golems and at this point in time we didn't actually know that the rock golems could clear the rocks by standing close to them which we'll soon find out so we ended up getting very very overwhelmed and this is where we started to have a lot of wipes until we did finally notice that the rock golems could soak up meteors so with all of our new knowledge we then decided to just take a step back for a second, kind of go back to the literal drawing board, that being Microsoft Paint with my big Microsoft Paint strats. And we decided to kite the golems next to the rocks, clean up the floor with the first set. And then when they were all dead and the boss started raining down, then six new meteors, we then had a clean room, a fresh slate to start with. And we would place these rocks down and try and have the golems walk past them. Um, so after a little bit of trial and error, we noticed that the golems would only soak in two meteors each before they turned into, once again, this kind of unkillable huge mega golem. So the idea was there are six rocks and three golems, so we would take two rocks with each golem. So we came up with a nice way to do this with three kind of small lanes. But before that, we actually came up with what chat decided to call a Mario Kart strat where someone in the group just decided that we would start on one map and because the meteors were just dropping on our heads, if we ran as a group, we would just drop them in a circle around the room. So we ran to one marker, that being A, at the start of every single time this intermission came out, and we would just run clockwise around the room without popping sprint and just stay grouped so that these meteors would just drop on our heads, but we would be out of range by the time that it dropped because the meteor would snapshot to our position and then it would just drop the meteor behind us in our wake sort of thing. So this actually was really nice. It led to the six meteors being spread in kind of this very wide arc. And then there was enough space left in the corner to drop uh, the last three meteors as well um, without them popping and blowing up each other as well. So it left the ads kind of standing in three separate um, alleyways and we would just kite them past the rocks, taking two each. And this was a really, really good strat, which... We started to perfect pretty quick, to be honest, and it really quickly led us to finally seeing the second phase, which is the Heaven's Fall phase. Nice intro. And the last one. 
Alright, nice. Let's try to get back to the red marker just in case we have to do something again. Sorry, one. Nice. Ten seconds to mega flat. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Uh, let's go in the middle. Like, no, edge, edge. No middle? I don't know. <laughs> okay. We lived. We lived. Okay, so it's on a timer. Okay, we're cooking. Let's just go again. Uh, I just got squashed by a piece of diamond. Okay, move out of those. This seems to be rotating. Maybe we LB3 the add with the melee? Actually, just heal it, heal it LB3 now, so we can recover and continue. Kill the adds. Try and take it out if you can. Watch out for cleaves. Binding chain, move away. Just break these. I think you just got run max range. No, doesn't seem to. Maybe you just kill. Hmm. Okay, can't break the chain by running. Frog though. Um, these, these, yeah, these like white circles on the floor. I soaked one and it despawned, but I don't really know what it did. Like, it didn't give me a buff or anything. Maybe it cleanses your chain, actually. Oh, maybe it cleanses chain. Wait, let me see. I soaked one, it did nothing, but... So now the fight was getting really interesting. We decided to VOD review our pull. And we saw that people were dying to some kind of chain debuff um, from the ad that spawned. It was attaching chains to people. And we saw that their stacks were increasing the longer that it was alive. And that there seemingly was no way to drop the stacks. However, I very quickly noticed there were these small white circles on the ground. And that was kind of the end of day one. Now going in fresh to day two, we were quite invigorated. We were very hungry for a kill here. And honestly, the progress was a lot quicker this day. Because we kind of had phase one down to a T at this point. So on this ad in phase two, we had insanely good damage. It was dying almost straight away before it almost before it even got a cast out for the chains. So all we were doing is killing it off, making sure we moved out of the AoE when it died. And then the people with the chain debuffs, uh, especially the pink ones, would make sure they picked up uh, these white small circles on the ground. And then we saw that there were these debuffs going out. There was an ice one, a fire one, and a lightning one. Quickly noticed that the fire would obviously cleanse the ice. So if you got hit by an ice one, we would make a stack up inside the red beam, which was the fire debuff coming out. And if we got a lightning one, we noticed that it stunned everyone around you and gave you a paralysis buff, which was very inconvenient going forward because it would randomly stun you in the middle of doing other mechanics. So we made the call to constantly check our debuffs and always move away from everyone if you have the lightning here. And we actually got to see the dive bombs very early on. Um, we first just thought it was a ton of damage and a knockback so the immediate decision was all right well everyone just pop your knockback immunity so that's arm's length and shortcuts and stuff like that and we thought that we could kind of just cheese it by doing that sadly did not work so my next suggestion was to use the gravity wells on the floor oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay right so yeah yeah, yeah. you're right so okay so we need to leave those uh, gravity well things up and I think you run into the gravity well because it makes you heavy, right? Before the dive bomb hits you. Uh, so you won't move as far, basically. You won't get like pounded out into the side of the ring. So we did get stuck here for quite a while, kind of perfecting this sequence of mechanics that we saw. So it was an iron chariot, which is an AOE around the boss that we need to move away from, followed immediately by gravity wells and then lightning debuffs. And then there was this group soak stack mechanic that we needed to have a certain amount of people soaking, so like a body check. So I came up with this idea to move out real far, as shown on this diagram. So I came up with this plan to move out a bit further than we actually needed to on the Iron Chariot, and kind of wait for one to two seconds just to bait our gravity wells outside of the boss a little bit, so it wasn't intruding on the space that we actually needed to play the fight. So we would move out from the chariot quite far, wait, 
drop our grav wells as we sprinted back in towards the boss and then because we were all ending up at the boss at the same time didn't matter who got the soaking mechanic because we were stacked up nice and tight behind the boss so this was a pretty flawless tactic from us to be honest and at this point we're really really comfortable with this phase and we can actually see ourselves getting close to a kill we just need to work out how the dive bombs work and every now and then we got a very nice pull where we Kind of got lucky on the dive bombs. We saw that the markers go over people's heads. So that's like green circle makes the bleeping sound. And that would go over people's head. And our strat was basically to move between two dragons. So they would kind of do a crisscross pattern over each other. And the second one uh, moved between the next two dragons or just to kind of make that dragon do as uh, narrow of an angle over the arena as possible. Sadly, it didn't really work like that. There was no real intuitive way that we could work out how they actually worked how that mechanic worked and we kind of just ended up cheesing it and just crossing our fingers and hoping for the best and hoping for as few people as possible to die sometimes we burn the healer lb3 to get people back up and then from that point on the phase kind of just repeated and we actually just before the end of day two managed to get ourselves a 0.2 percent wipe the healer was the only one left alive and the boss kind of phased into the second dive bomb phase where she flew off into the sky and we couldn't actually target her anymore so we couldn't do any more damage. So if we'd have had a tiny bit more DPS we wouldn't have got that dive bomb phase and we could have killed her. Um, but we had a few people dying, a few too many people dying, myself included, and not quite enough reses. Not, maybe, maybe it was honestly because we didn't use potions and things like that. Keep going, keep going. Okay, we ball. Okay, we ball. Fire Diva, watch out. Iron Chariot, all the way back, all the way back, all the way back. Come back towards boss. Uh, I, I'll sacrifice, I'll sacrifice. Maybe res me. Yeah. Any res if you have, you can. Uh, do six, do the LB, six, do the LB. Come on! Go, 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 go! <laughs> no shot! Alright, survive. Just survive. Just survive. No fucking way! 0.2%! Oh my fucking god. Wow. That was very unlucky. And we actually called day two there and we just went to come back fresh on day three and kind of just okay. pump until we got the kill. Obviously, oh, our strat could. was kind of flawed Let's because we it. didn't understand the dive bombs fully, but it did quite often get us quite close to a kill. So we just kept on pulling until the stars finally aligned. And I'll leave you now with the kill pull. Enjoy. And the, it works the same as Twin Tanya, right? Like you, you move it out and it locks your position. And then you're, uh, then you move back in. Or move over to the other side of the arena. So you go like, you go stand on the marker, like wherever I call, or between two drakes, until the green circle above your head disappears. Meteor one, by the way, coming out now. And then after the meet, after the green marker disappeared, you just fucking leg it as fast as you can to the other side of the arena, like opposite to where you were standing, in relative to your position. We do got this, we do got this. Me two. Dynamo and scatter after this.
middle. Yo, Zig. Yeah, man. Pumping them. Red is middle. We'll just kill Red out right here. So just soak two rocks for one of the tanky boys. Okay, start green. Let's have green soak uh, twice. Actually, yeah, blue's on the way. It's fine. Let's do it blue. Just kill green now. Let that green soak one more. Now we go. Cool. Go to one. This is the run. This is the run. Wait for my call. And go now. Go, go, go. Skirt, skirt. Ready to spread with the uh, ads now. That's good, that's good, I think. Come middle. Okay, G. And red is middle. We'll try and take the two ones in the middle with the reds. Switch up for the AoE when it comes. We'll take four and D, okay? He's coming now. It took two. Yeah, this kill red now. That's fine. Take blue next. Let's just take one more. Don't kill. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Now we'll just take the last one. A lot of limit breakers, so it's just good. I feel like we're getting better at P2 to the point where we like limit break might not save us. I don't know. We'll hold it anyway. Kind of want to send it to DPS, so I right, don't stand middle and don't stand on cell. Okay, stand middle now. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Okay, add us up. Purple chain, you need to pick up a circle. Next is dynamo, so watch your debuffs. Oh no, don't be in middle. Sorry, it's, it's don't be in middle. Yeah. Don't get knocked out either. And then watch out for grab wells during the pizza slice. Okay, next is dynamo. Watch your debuffs now. Watch your debuffs. Next is going to be Chariot. Okay, so we're going to move all the way back. Bait the grab wells and go back to boss for the soap. Off wall, yeah, of course. Go all the way back. All the way back. And hold. And go back in. Go back in. And then straight after this is die bombs. Okay. Straight after this is die bombs. So be prepared now. Look for the drakes. Safe spot. Uh, can go to two with the dive bomb here. And you can go to uh, B, B as well, okay. Do that, that's fine. And next one, go to B. Spread here. It's not B. 
be. Okay, other side, other side, other side. Okay, res, uh, res me up singly. Res me singly and then LB as well. LB, yeah, yeah, nice. We're good. I'll just fucking pump. Okay, okay, okay. Just giga pump now. Okay, this is good. This is good. Next, I think will be a dynamo, if I'm not mistaken. So just be prepared for that. Watch your debuffs always. Dynamo, yeah, dynamo. Watch your debuffs always. There will be a chariot next. We're going all the way back, remember? I think we can still handle the soap after the after the chariot also. So go all the way back. Big grab wells, hold, and go back in now. Attack on boss for soap here. Not faint now. Okay. Watch your debuffs, watch your debuffs if you got lightning. Watch your debuffs always. This is clean. High bomb, get the fuck out, just get the fuck out. Mini, yeah. Carry it, just go all the way back. Opposite side to Mini though. kyrie has got one as well. Just try and live, just try and live. Dynamo. Alright. Res if we can, uh, maybe. Maybe it's maybe it's fine actually. Maybe it's fine. Just just go, just go, just see this. Come on! We need to push. This is it! This is it! I am doing the LB to finish it! Come on! Debuffs. Keep pumping, but please don't phase. Is that it? Yo! Let's fucking go! Yes! Get the fuck out of town! Yo! Yo, old man river, thank you, man. Oh, bragging rights with min eye level. Oh, baby. Yo, oh my god, Crimson Dragon James, what the hell, dude? Holy, holy. Jesus Christ. Crimson Dragon Dreams with the 50 gifted oh, subs. Yeah, we need to get the screenshot going. Uh, let me let me get somewhere near if you can shuffle along a little bit just so it works better for my screenshot thing. Very nice, guys. Very fucking nice. And the platform went all red now. What a gamer squad. <laughs> the party made the the party made this happen. Yeah, yeah. Made raid. Made raid. Look at us.